How's it going, YouTube? Today we're going to be taking a look at the three uh, Datsun brothers released during the Earthrise series. So all three of these releases are really, really nice updates to their Siege characters uh, in the second portion of the War for Cybertron trilogy. Now there are some debates on the logistics of these three, as two of them are exclusives, and only one of them was actually a mass retail release. That said, the one that was a mass retail release um, was actually an exclusive during the Siege line. The character Smokescreen was an exclusive during the Siege line, as was Blue Streak at being an exclusive to the um, was the 35th anniversary of Transformers during the Siege line, being a Walmart exclusive, um, and then also a Generation Select exclusive for Smokescreen, being Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Um, during that series, Prowl was the only one that was not an exclusive. This time around, the only one that was not an exclusive is Smokescreen. Both Prowl and Blue Streak were exclusive this time. So, getting right into the logistics of that, Smokescreen was a mass retail release during Wave 1, or Wave 2, Wave 2 of the Transformers Earthrise line. So he was very easy, very available to get, and also a um, character that a lot of fans love. Um, he also had a different piece of molding here, uh, as well as a different head in robot mode. Everything else is bare bones, pretty much the exact same, other than colors. The other two being the exclusives, um, going right into Blue Streak, he is a Walgreens exclusive in the United States. Um, I believe Walgreens doesn't really exist in other countries in the world, so this was more difficult for some people in other countries unless they had stores that took on the exclusive um, for this figure. This was branded in the regular Earthrise packaging, so the packaging looked exactly the same as the typical Earthrise stuff. Um, and of course he came with a different head than what Smokescreen had, uh, the same accessories, and then of course a complete palette change, and the whole chest piece here, uh, the, the front bumper was changed as well. So you can see right here, it's a completely different molding on these two vehicles. Now Prowl was the most egregious of the three, and Mine actually is a bit of a defective figure. However, with him being, uh, with the issue I have with him, I do not think it's worth returning him because I do not know if I would ever be able to get this figure again. Due to the terrible, terrible way that it was marketed, the terrible, terrible way that Hasbro um, actually sent out the figures, so the distribution was absolutely horrendous uh, as compared to these two, which he did sell out twice on Walgreens' website, but right now every Walgreens I've gone to in the last couple months has two of them on the shelf. So he's very, very easily um, obtainable in the United States still. Him? Uh, when Aldi ran a promotion for the holiday season for Christmas, um, where they bring a lot of toys into the store to sell during the season, he was actually part of the wave that they brought in. Uh, it was Wave 2, which contained Smokescreen, um, Air, Airwave, RC, and the Quintesson Alicon. So, he's also very easily obtainable in the United States still. Now this figure being an Amazon exclusive um, that's sold out at least five times to my knowledge on Amazon's website and is currently sold out right now. It was delayed, for me mine was delayed like four or five times. Um, I actually ended up getting the Paradron Medic set before I got these guys three weeks ago, uh, the Prowl and Ironhide 2-pack. And then, of course, 
Once I received those figures, both of them had minor defects that do cause some issues to the transformation. Um, mostly on him with the transformation. Ironhide seems to work fairly well, except for his chest plate is a bit off-center, so it actually causes a crack in the hinge on the clear plastic piece. And then, of course, the other issues with Ironhide, we'll get into those when I do my Ironhide and Ratchet um, review. For this guy, though, I think I'll just... Wait till I talk about these other two. So, I'm going to start off with the first one that was released, the first one I received, which is Smokescreen. And this is a beautiful, beautiful figure. Um, the paint is very well applied across the figure. I do like the red. Um, due to all the red being painted on this figure, it matches up very, very nicely. Um... All the blue is plastic, there is no blue paint, which is really nice. So all the blue matches up perfectly. Um, this, There's small clear plastic pieces, and all the clear plastic pieces um, are the same color. Uh, so you get this like kind of dark tint, brownish tint, uh, windshield look. Uh, so you can't see a whole lot of what's going on inside, which is very nice to me. I really do appreciate that. You can see on the other two, their windshields are way more transparent. Um, you can actually see like their fists, their heads, all the inner workings of both of those figures. On Smokescreen, I wish, you know, I wish all three figures would have used this color of the translucent plastic. I like how this piece here on the front is done. Um, the white is a very crisp, uh, very crisp paint app. And it's very well done across the board on this figure. Uh, I have no complaints about the way the white paint was applied. A lot of figures, white paint is very tricky, uh, especially on darker colors. This blue being a color I would have thought it would have been tricky on. Or even on this part where they painted it over the red paint on the clear plastic. Both those spots I would have thought it would have been a little bit trickier on. I do wish this said 38, um, however, I'm not too terribly worried about the number being um, accurate. It's not really a big thing to me. And then, also, if the taillights had been painted in this really nice red, that would have set this thing apart a lot. That being said, very clean underneath on all these... Um, there's a bit of hollow space here that's really unusable. You can't even store like a weapon in there. Kind of unfortunate, but um, we can make do. You do have the uh, this gunmetal gray plastic poking out back here. It's not a major thing, um, but on the other two, you will see it looks a lot worse uh, than this. On this, you can kind of get away with thinking, hey, maybe it's just like the support for the spoiler and the spoiler can lift or something. Um, you know, just kind of imagine things. So that, that's it for him. Also, this Autobot insignia is very crisply applied. I do believe it's... I want to say it's just the white tampoed on and then it's just the red from underneath. Moving on to the second one I received uh, that I got. This guy I actually ordered in the second wave of Walgreens exclusives. And then uh, there was a mishap with FedEx where they said they didn't have it. Walgreens said that they sent it out. Um, then they went back in, said that, Wal uh, said that FedEx never picked it up, but it's not in their warehouse. And that they would issue me a refund. Well, they issued me a refund. This guy came literally the next day that they after they issued me a refund. So, essentially, I got this guy for free. There's not much I can complain about. Um, the color looks amazing on this. I love this, uh, this gray color. The paint match isn't perfect, but it's really, really, really nice. Um, it's very close. You don't get this swirly uh, plastic look in the paint, of course, but um, it's not too prevalent on the sides. It's really just on the spoiler you see it. So it makes me think maybe it was just a bit of a issue with the mold on these pieces in general. 
they did go in and paint the whole rear section here so you got red paint for the uh headlight or for the tail lights i rather and then of course black here uh for detail on the back there is a bit of a gapping issue here on all three and i guess that's a widespread issue with this mold something about the tolerance is not being exactly correct uh it's not a big issue you can also see some issue here you know on all three so like this kind of doesn't line up perfectly but like if you squeeze it, you can see how it would line up perfectly, but it kind of springs back away. Um, also here, there's just a little bit of gapage, but it's not too egregious. They did go and paint the uh, rims on uh, the wheels for this figure, which is really nice. They didn't paint the wheel or the rims on either of the other two. I do like this blue used here on the. Uh, headlights. I wish they would have gone with blue here on the headlights for this figure and him. Maybe also him, but I do like how they look kind of blacked out like a race car wouldn't have headlights. Um, the new uh, kind of sporty uh, front here. Uh, I can't remember exactly what this part's called underneath the bumper. Uh, it looks really nice though. It's very nicely done. The gunmetal paint on this figure is great. It almost looks like a matte black on top. Um, but it does have a little bit of a shine to it. Oh no, that's actually different paint apps. So this is matte black, now that I'm seeing it in a different lighting. Um, this is matte black. This is actually a glossy uh, gunmetal. Which is also used for the head, but lightened up it looks like, maybe? I don't know. This guy's kind of got a few different paint apps going on with this being this gray color. As you can see here, he does have red plastic here that's poking out, which makes it a little bit, a little bit uh, more noticeable than what his was. Um, and then that's about it for this guy. Uh, he's made out of like four different colors of plastic, which is cool. Uh, and then this mold in general rolls really, really nicely. Now the problematic one, and I don't know if it's because they rushed this one, if they rushed this release, if they just didn't have the fit and finish, if there was some kind of demand that was not being met, that they needed to kind of cut corners on them, but I've heard a lot of issues with this set, not just with general uh, quality issues, but like missing parts even, like the iron hide would be missing panels. Um, I've seen somebody, I think, said that their prowl was actually missing the light bar. Uh, I've seen missing wheels on some of these. It's kind of crazy just how bad the iron hide and prowl release was. Um, it sold out almost immediately um, as soon as it was announced. And then it sold out again after they re uh, after they uh, put it back on pre order, and as far as I know right now, it's sold out. It was delayed several times, just massive issues with the release of Prowl and Ironhide. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set these guys off to the side because this it's not great, guys. This one is not great. At least in vehicle mode. His robot mode for me, it lines up mostly correctly, but there is one area that does not line up perfectly, and I can tell it's from some hinge. I want to say it's this hinge here along the uh, windshield to the hood. And I've got to say, if it is that hinge that's causing the issues, it could be very, very problematic in the future. I want to show you what happens. So I'm picking him up. And right now I have him like squeezed together in a way that he's holding together. But if I just pull a little bit, look at that. Both doors. This one pops out even further though. I'll show you something on these two. If I do that. All right, let me try that again. If I do that though, they come out a little bit. This one, like I can't even get them both to stay together unless I squeeze it just right. And then 
let's look at like look see this one still stays mostly in place this one came out a little bit but it's still you know it's a bit looser than uh, this side so and that's the same thing what happened with the uh, smoke screen I'm guessing but then I push them back in and they go straight in I pushed it back in they go straight in I push this guy back in one of them always stays out and that's kind of the issue here I'm having and then you can see how large the gap is here. So that's what leads me to believe that it's actually this pin hinge along here um, causing the issue. But I don't want to take it apart and look at it because, oh, this clear plastic. A lot of people have broken this piece on all three figures. Uh, broken the windshield off. Just due to how this was made. It's just absolutely terribly made. Um, you got really thin pieces here of the clear plastic, just really thin. In between that is the black plastic piece. And then you have the white plastic here on the outside. So if you overextend it, this thing will break right off. There is no fixing it. I kind of want to knock this pin out here to see if I can't fix it with my Dremel, just kind of go in and uh, just loosen that up a little bit, just loosen the clear piece of plastic, but this thing, it, it terrifies me because of how thin that clear plastic is. I don't really want to do that. And then it wouldn't have been a problem if the release hadn't been rushed so bad. Like I was waiting patiently. I was waiting patiently for this because I had seen so many issues with other people getting theirs earlier, uh, missing parts, broken, missing things out of the package. Uh, just completely being untransformable. And when I finally did release or uh, re uh, receive mine, I was very upset when I received it. And, you know, I can't even keep it in vehicle mode very much without the doors wanting to easily pop off. And then this huge gap here is just a nuisance. You can even, like, if you look at it from the front, you can see how off center it, or how offset it is. Comparing, you know, the hood to the angle that the roof is. <sighs> like I said, though, the new piece on this is this light bar. Um, it's basically the same light bar that we'll see with Ratchet, but with a uh, five millimeter peg here instead of two posts, uh, two uh, tabs here on the side to attach it. And it's molded in clear plastic uh, and then painted over with the black and the red. Now, I don't hate that, but I wish they would put the paint budget elsewhere if they're going to do something like that. They could have easily molded it in either black or red and painted it in one of the, uh, in the other color, but instead... Well, I would have preferred they paint it or they molded it in black, which there's black on the figure, so you could have easily attached it to that same sprue and then painted red over it. You're already using red tampo. You're already using red paint for the uh, to, for the uh, crest on his head. They might as well has done, have done that where they molded it in black instead of the clear plastic. The problem with clear plastic is how easily it breaks. So if you're um, if you put too much strain on it, it'll break a lot easily, uh, a lot more easily than the opaque plastic would. Um, I mean, I've already busted the handle on my eight face figure, so I can't really review that properly now because it was only after like two transformations that that busted off. And that was with me gently pulling it straight out, not angling it in any way, just gently pulling the piece out and it just sheared right off. Um, now this piece, I'm not too concerned about it breaking because it's such a shallow, uh, a shallow, uh, plug that goes into the port, but like at the same time, it's just, it's ridiculous how they, uh, just distribute the clear plastic and you see just pushing that in like that it popped that door out
Uh, I might fix this in a later time, but right now I'm just going to review it as it is. So I'm going to transform one of the figures on camera. The other two I will uh, come back and transform later. So what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to go over the accessories. So all three of them come with the same shape, uh, the same molded rifle. Um, we'll look at the white one because you can see the details really well on it. And they're all just basically a complete rehash of like the G1 rifle. It's got some posts on the side. Uh, these can plug onto the vehicles at the top here. Uh, so you can plug that one in there. Smoke screen had a blue one and Blue Streak had the silver one. So it's ridiculous. I wish they would have found a way or molded a way in there to store these underneath in this hollow gap because I mean there's plenty of room in there for it. You can just kind of like stick that in there um, and kind of like have it in there. There's room in there for it. So if they would have found a way to tab it in somehow and then store it underneath, underneath there like they did on like the uh, old classics Datsun Brothers, that would have been great. But the other accessories are exclusive to Smokescreen and Blue Streak, and that is the shoulder cannons. So they're similarly molded. Here's the uh, here's Blue Streak's shoulder cannon. Uh, they're all same, all the same. It's just two of each uh, color. Uh, you can see here's the blue on smoke screens. And then they have ports on the sides uh, rather than pegs. And then they just have this thin tab here. Now I believe this tab is not compatible with the uh, older versions. It, or was it? It might be compatible. I'd have to double check later, but um, just I'm gonna say for right now, it's not compatible. Uh, it would require me going into another room of the house and getting my barricade figure. But you can stick these into the tabs here. Now, a lot of people were upset that Prowl did not receive these uh, weapons. And that's mainly because in the G1 cartoon, he didn't have shoulder cannons. Uh, the Masterpiece had it as a carryover from the Blue Streak figure, for the most part. And then... Smokescreen should have different shoulder cannons, but I don't, you know, I don't necessarily care that they're the same. Alright, so transforming these figures, I'm going to go ahead and transform Blue Streak. Um, just for, you know, you can see the similarity with uh, where this is exactly the same here on the front bumper as Prowl. Um, but otherwise, all three of them transform exactly the same. So first off, I want to go ahead and remove all the all the accessories. You can actually transform him with these on, uh, with these shoulder cannons on. But for right now, I'm going to remove them. And we'll go ahead and begin. So first thing I do is you want to pull out the arms. Just pull them straight down out of the inside. And then flip out these small red pieces, which will become the heels. Now there are some... Uh, options with these you can either in robot mode have them out or have them in um, he'll stand fine either way but having them out will keep the wheels completely off the floor or off the surface he's standing on uh, next you can go ahead and pull the doors out just pull the doors out to the sides and this joint here is quite loose so this will usually flap around by itself now now this is this next step is kind of the scariest feeling step, but you want to grab these like this, and then I'll put my thumb here and just kind of pull this out, and you feel it like kind of pop past this ridge here, and then it's good to go. It's that frees up the feet, and you can see how his hips are down here, his thighs go up, and then his shins down. Uh, you can then just pull this. You kind of want to pull it out at an angle first uh, using the hip joint because you need to get it past the uh, the roof of the vehicle. And then just pull it straight down, straighten it out like so, and then rotate the waist. Now this is another kind of scary part is separating right here. You want to pull them straight out. 
Now, it's kind of hard to do, so you kind of need to get your fingers under here um, behind the wheels. So I put my middle fingers in here, put my thumbs here and here, and just kind of pull it straight. Now, even doing that, I have stressed this small tab here, um, and eventually it might shear off uh, completely. But now he's free to stand. You also have these little panels here on the inside of his legs that flip around and kind of fill this in right here. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's a step. So it is a step to the transformation. Go ahead and pull the arms out now right here. And then you want to push right here at this part of the middle of the hood. And I'll push, I'll snap past and then push down just like so. Now here's a part where I'd be afraid of scratching paint um, because this whole piece, this whole surface is painted. Um, so you want to bring this in as far as it'll go. Uh, it should rest against there. And then you'll bring it up straight through, making sure to let this go however it wants to. Um, so it'll try and it'll want to push out a little bit and then come back in. Do not put any pressure on this after this point. Uh, there's no reason to. This is its natural resting position. Next, you'll bring the arms down and these little slots uh, in this assembly will attach to that tab there on both sides. Let's focus right there. Right over it. Rotate, bring down the arms. And then you want to rotate his head now. And here is Blue Streak in his robot mode. And I'll transform the other two off camera. And we'll take a look at them in their robot mode. Now in between, uh, I'm going to jump in now and tell you, in between transforming um, Prowl, I did notice this piece is cracked here. Uh, this windshield piece is cracked in two spots, really, so it's honestly um, barely hanging on on this side. Luckily, the pin goes all the way through onto the other one, but that also further indicates that this side of the um, this side of the piece is actually um, it wasn't uh, the pin wasn't shot through correctly. So that just is a further indication. I'm gonna go ahead and finish transforming him on camera as I talk. Um, so that's my biggest issue with this figure. There's another thing I wanna show real quick on camera. So everything else is pretty straightforward. It seems that everything from here down is perfectly fine. It's just the upper body that I have issues with. Uh, see this side, uh, this tab in this slot I was talking about pegs in perfectly. On this side, they don't even line up. So I, what I have to end up doing is pushing it, uh, and that's just, it's not good. In the package, it was actually, the tab was actually behind the shoulder assembly. Um, so I, I feel like that should have been caught during the production of the figure. Another difference with this is there was a running change after... Um, as after the original release of Wave 2, I believe. This was an original release, Wave 2. Um, but there was a running change where they actually changed the front here of the knee. So actually it's open. Um, I guess a lot of people were having problems with it cracking. Uh, you can see right here, it's a closed piece. And on this figure, it's completely open. Now I did see somebody on Facebook um, in one of the Transformer groups I'm in actually has uh, I think it was I think I think it was a blue streak that actually has one leg of the older wave and then one leg like this of the newer wave. Um, kind of a weird, but uh, honestly, it probably doesn't affect anything other than the aesthetic look of that figure. And now that I have all three in uh, the robot modes, I can gear up uh, Blue Streak, uh, Smokescreen, and Prowl with their weaponry so you can see what they look like. So 
the shoulder cannons once again go right into the same slots as before. And then he will hold his hand, uh, hold his rifle just like so. Same thing with uh, smoke screen. But this time I'm going to actually show the storage method you can use for his rifle. And that's actually just plugging it here underneath on the roof to the side. And it makes it look really nice, um, just kind of slung back there uh, when he's not using it. So very, very smart weapon storage on this figure. And then once again, Prowl just has the rifle. They look good in robot mode. They all three look really, really good. They kind of have a retro future vibe to them. They look like the original Datsun uh, Fair Ladies, uh, the Fair Lady Z cars, but with some modern uh, takes on different molding uh, and everything. I've actually looked at um, some real life pictures of the exact model, and they look very, very uh, authentic to that. And this kind of symbolizes, like, the uh, original, like, headlight covers that would be on the cars themselves. For articulation-wise, you can actually angle the wings back just that far. Uh, they can't go any further because the, uh, the side view mirrors are actually in the way. Um, and you wouldn't want to break anything, so. Uh, the arms can go all the way around other than where the door will hinder that, uh, depending on where you have the doors positioned. Uh, if you want, you can use the transformation hinge here as a point of articulation to bring the arm further up, but the natural, uh, the natural movement of that universal joint brings the arm to directly uh, to the side. It has a rotation at the bicep. Uh, this piece is actually painted. Uh, it's the gray plastic painted red. So it's a little bit tighter on the bicep swivel. Uh, elbow bend to a little more a little more than 90 degrees. And then uh, the wrist rotates a full 360. Uh, sorry, I was interrupted by a phone call for a second. Um, so going... Uh, Continuing with the articulation, his head is on a ball joint, so it does do a full 360. Um, and then it can look up a fair degree. Uh, he can look up quite a bit. And then he can look down quite a bit as well. Rotation at the waist. His uh, hips are universals. Very tight, comes up to here goes back only to about here because the uh, back of the piece, uh, the back of the hip piece actually comes up to the back of his, or comes in contact with the back of his uh, kind of oblique right there. Um, if you position him to the side, well not even then because that other piece here comes into contact. So. There's not really a good way of getting his leg any further than that. Ooh, that did not feel good. So, yeah, no, there's not really a good way of getting his leg further than that. But you can. It just doesn't feel good. Uh, his leg will come all the way out that way uh, for a full split. It will rotate at the thigh. And you can see that this is completely closed off here. Probably to make up for this being completely hollow on the back of his legs. Um, that is an issue for some, but for me, due to the transformation of it, I'm not really too uh, concerned about this. Uh, the only concern I have with these is that this is a solid piece, a solid clear plastic piece with a hinge. And most of the hinge is the clear plastic. Um, I feel like it's sturdy enough that it's not going to break, but over time... We'll see uh, actually how that works out. Uh, these pieces can move around if you uh, need to move them, uh, just based on the uh, orientation of where you have the foot. Uh, it can tilt forward a bit, 
Uh, it can tilt back a lot due to the transformation. And then you have an ankle rocker. And that's a bit of a ridiculous degree there. As I said earlier, though, you can also fold these pieces in. Um, they don't necessarily have to be folded out, but he does kind of stand a little bit strange. Uh, you do have to stand him a different way in order to uh, keep him balanced. All three of these, deco-wise, look really good and very... Uh, they're very um, true to their G1 selves. They even went as far as to remold the head on smokescreen once again to give him that uh, season two accurate look. Meanwhile, the other two have the same exact head sculpt. Um, I really kind of do wish they would have made the crest on Prowl a little bit bigger because his crest was bigger than uh, Blue Streaks, but I'm sorry, knocked the camera, but um, I'm not too terribly worried about it. They all clean up very nicely around the back. So that looks really good. And just paint app wise, they look great. They are flawless based on the paint. Prowl does have some few a few fit and finish issues, but other than that, these are really good figures. And if you can get your hands on them, these two are easier to get in the United States right now. Um, Prowl, yeah, uh, honestly with Prowl, the, your best bet might to be to get a second blue streak and just customize it because he's, he's so hard to get your hands on. He's so hard to actually obtain that figure due to the exclusivity of it and just how poorly the... Uh, how poorly managed it was based on distribution. So it's great to have all three. If you can get all three, that's awesome. But honestly, if you can't get your hands on this version of Prowl, you might have to just either go with the Siege version, which completely looks out of place with these, or you might have to just get another Blue Streak and just paint it yourself. Uh, so... I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, this has been my review of the Datsun Brothers from the Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy series. I want to thank you for watching, and until next time, till all are one.